Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I have some insights for you regarding the process of ascension and things to look out for and avoid. Um, and uh, part of this was sparked by some reading I've been doing in the National Geographic for December 2016. There's an article in there about orangutans and it's written by Mel White and the photographs are by Tim Laman. It starts on uh, page 62 in that issue of National Geographic. Amongst the orangutans in Sumatra, uh, only only one male in in a group of males becomes uh, develops a dominant male characteristics such as the facial flanges and so forth becomes very powerful and the leader of the group, right? And just as with the wolf packs and the alpha males in wolf packs, uh, other males don't have much chance of mating, um, and except it, unless they sneak in when the dominant male is not looking. So, so all the kudos and all the rewards go to the dominant male, who must um, also defend his territory. Um, but he's so much stronger and so much bigger than others that, that his chances are pretty good of, of staying alive, you know. Uh, well, that's kind of debatable. But he feels that way, I feel. He, in other words, the d dominant male in a pack, whether orangutan or wolf, has the hormones that allow it to feel aggressive rather than submissive. So it feels like it's on top. And it is on top, and it doesn't feel as uh, as much of a feeling of fear for survival. Okay, so that's a premise. Actually, it's fighting all the time to maintain its top topness, but but I feel that its endocrine makeup is such that it it feels that it is on top, and it feels confident. You see, so not fearful. And you may recall I've written in past about the uh, fight or flight response and the current tendency people have as they become more electromagnetically sensitive to experience anxiety and panic attacks arising from the changes that are taking place in their cellular structure and their physical bodies. So, so there's this this tendency to either feel fight or flight amongst humans now that the shift has occurred and the incoming light is changing our physical cells and upgrading them. So the question is fight or flight. It's similar to the orangutan and wolf pack situation uh, for men. In today's world, um, most men have a chance to uh, exhibit a um, modulated form of the uh, alpha male response because the cultural values of business competition and sports, uh, either viewing or participating in competitive sports, uh, allow the expression of alpha male dominance in a modified way. So uh, there are alpha males in our society, uh, some, but, but many males have more chance to express aggressiveness in a modified way than is the case with an orangutan group or tribe and uh, 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 a wolf pack, for instance. Those are some of the advantages of civilized life. So. In the current context of, of ascension, uh, when so many people are experiencing um, changes in their cells, the question arises, will they feel a fight response or a flight response? Um, so, so amongst men, what I've found is that in general, they experience more of a fight response and, and women experience more of a flight response. Not always so. Sometimes, sometimes women experience, and men experience, first the one and then the other. 
Uh, my guess is that both could be treated through anti-anxiety drugs. That's just a, a supposition that needs to be tested. Um, so, and that these these drugs might be considered by the people involved during times of high light. Uh, in the past, this high light has had to do with um, uh, solar flares, incoming coronal mass ejections that that impact Earth's magnetosphere, and uh, solar winds that come in. Uh, right now, we're in a solar minimum, and we're also at close to the minimum light time of year, the winter solstice. Um, so there's not a lot of those sorts of light events happening. However, uh, other people have noticed, other light workers have noticed, and I completely agree that there's a new sort of energy ushered in perhaps around the time of the winter solstice uh, 2016, and it's been impacting Earth in January, all of January. And this new light is so pure and so um, refined, so, so light, that uh, it's affecting, it's moving fast, it's l far, far less dense, and it's affecting us in ways heretofore unknown, really unexplored, and, and all for the better. I feel in a healing context, say for instance, for the physical and emotional bodies of human beings. More remains to be discovered about that, but just a heads up that we may need uh, anti-anxiety remedies uh, for reasons not triggered by solar events in the coming year, 2017. Uh, in my opinion, drugs such as clonazepam, clonopin, are the very last resort for something like that. But the most important thing is to to modulate the energy field so that we, uh, so that it f expresses or feels joy or gratitude or appreciation or some positive emotion um, whenever uh, the issue comes up of negative emotions. We have to become masters of our emotions. And that is done not by, um, by f telling ourselves or chastising ourselves or punishing ourselves for bad emotions not through mental energy. That is because that mental energy of chastisement and punishment only causes more of a problem. It makes the uh, emotional body, the astral body, or subtle body called the astral field of a person, even more dense and kind of choppy and like clogged up with thoughts that hold down the emotional body in strange contorted energy patterns. So so we can't be saying, don't do this, don't do that, like that. We can't be saying, don't say this, don't say that. No. What we say to ourselves that's negative adds to the intensity of our negative emotions or that we wanted to repress. So it increases the intense fury of the repressed and negative emotions. What's needed to rid ourselves of negative emotions is su such techniques as a, a color wash of the chakras or an energy wash of joy. As proposed by some of the Ascension Resources people on my Ascension Resources uh, blog page. And there are many other such methods. There are quite a few ways of modulating the emotions and they they generally speaking don't avoid, don't have to do with uh, words unless the words create a positive visualization that affects the emotions. So visualizations are very good, and songs and uh, and actions that are the thing that we really, with our heart, want to do. Sudden actions like I want a foot bath or I want to go out and sit in the sunlight, something like that. Something simple. I'd like a little nap, you know, and so. But and we have to act on these like on a dime, like a martial artist would act. The minute that we feel uh, a negative emotion, it's going to start suddenly turning into a cyclone of negativity that may result in acting out in this new light. So, so the thing to do is to notice it, become aware immediately, and move into the solution. 
okay, what do I do to feel really good? All right, so that's the heads up for January.